What's up everybody, my name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So we love reviewing all things gaming peripheral related here at Kit Guru, including all kinds of different headsets. But today we're checking out something a little bit different for you. We're taking a look at a pair of gaming speakers for those of you that prefer to use speakers instead. So you may have already heard of them, Edifier. They make all kinds of high quality audio solutions and today we're checking out their G2000 gaming speakers. So if you haven't already, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps us out and it supports us for free. Edifier's G2000 gaming speakers are pretty small desktop speakers that have three connectivity options. They are RGB LED lit as well, and even preset EQ options built straight into them. So here in the UK, they're retailing for around £110. Packaging wise, it's a well presented professional looking box with a black, grey and blue theme. It's not over the top in advertising the gaming element that we often see from other companies, but if I saw this in a shop, the box would appeal to me personally. There's a nice display of all the ports and angles of the speakers on the back of the box along with the specifications. Opening up the box, we're greeted with a thank you card, a manual, cables, we get a 3.5mm to 3.5mm aux cable, which feels great by the way. It's a rubber cable, which I'm actually happy about because it's a good quality one too, and it has gold plated connections. It's not too thick, but sturdy enough, and the rubber is not tacky in feel either. Next up, we have a USB-A to USB-A cable. This time the connections are not gold plated. The cable is slightly thicker, but it is the same rubber that can be found here. And last Lastly, we get our UK power adapter. The speakers are well packaged, being held in by plastic inserts. Straight away, you can see that both speakers are connected to each other by a non-detachable cable. It's a good length for around two meters and also has the same nice quality rubber coating, but the kinks don't pull out very well. So the first impressions are, uh, sadly, I'm a little bit disappointed that this cable is non-detachable. I studied music at university and I've used tons of PC speakers and music specific reference monitors. I always found PC speakers that had non-detachable cables slightly frustrating as they may not have enough length, but also, if there were ever a cable break, you can't change them easily either. Whereas most music specific monitors have dedicated XLR ports for both speakers to connect with each other on the back of them. So just like my speakers that you always see in my reviews. These are much better as you can buy a specific length XLR cable for your requirements, but also if they ever break, then they're really easy to replace. Now I do have to specify that PC speakers with detachable cables and most definitely music monitors are usually way more expensive than these little G2000s though. So music monitors are also not ideal for gaming as they usually have a very flat EQ profile. So I would recommend against using them unless music is your priority. Everything else about the G2000 actually looks great though. The plastic housing has a really nice matte finish around the sides. They feel sturdy with great build quality. There's no sharp edges and there's no rattle when you shake them either. I love the shape and design of the speakers. They look great on your desk and they're slightly angled up too as they're quite small, which I really like that as well. Each speaker has G2000 in gloss black on the front and on the outside we have Edifier in grey. I'm really thankful there's no mention of gaming on the speakers themselves as I always feel like this makes products look a little bit tacky. On the back of the master speaker we have a full-size USB-A port, our 3.5mm aux input, another 3.5mm for external sub if you have one, which is again really nice to see because I certainly wasn't expecting it. And we also have our power port. So there's minimal physical I.O. here but plenty enough for those that these are aimed at. And also that sub out is actually a really great addition. 
On the side of the master speaker, we have some buttons and toggles, but I will touch on these later in more detail. The slave speaker requires no power. It gets its power through the cable that attaches to the master speaker. This speaker has no IO or anything at all, actually. And this is just fine because you can actually operate both of them from the master speaker and it will change any EQ or connectivity settings and apply them to both speakers. So you may have noticed that the white panels on the back of both speakers and also sort of strips on the left and right too. This is for RGB LEDs. So when you first power on the G2000s, the, for the first time at least, you will hear almost like a car engine revving up. It's a little bit cheesy in my opinion, but then those RGB zones light up. Now it's default at blue, which is matching Edifier's blue company logo, which is quite nice. The zones themselves are diffused and they aren't blinding LEDs. And instead they're a sort of consistent soft hue. They look great from the back, but unless you have these backed right up against the wall, you're not really gonna see these zones. And it didn't bother me too much, but I would have liked to see an RGB strip maybe across the top panel where there's sort of nothing there but then again like I said it is a subtle design choice and really I have no problem with it. What is nice is the ability that you can change the RGB from the speakers so this takes us to the first button that we'll look at. So pressing the button on the bottom is actually to change between EQ settings. There are three settings music, game and movie modes. I'll talk about these later but holding this button instead of pressing it cycles between the RGB so you get solid turquoise, red, green, blue, yellow, and then after that it goes around and becomes a breathing animation. With a new colour, we have purple now added. Not really sure why that's not a static choice, but after that there is then a breathing colour cycle that breathes through all the colours at once. Finally, and thankfully, there's an RGB LED off mode too, which I'm glad to see as an option because I know quite a few people don't really care for RGB. It takes a while to cycle around all of these colors and options because you just have that single button and you have to press and hold to change between all of them. I don't see it as a big issue as once you've found your setting, you can sort of leave it where you want to. Before we look at other buttons, let's talk about connectivity. So you have the USB connection, 3.5 millimeter aux, but there's also Bluetooth connection as well. So this means you can connect them to almost anything, any games console or device by one way or another. The button at the top turns the speakers on and off by pressing and holding the button, which also turns the LEDs off as well, once off or on when you turn it on. So powering down also plays a sound. So again, it's a little bit cheesy. I mean, it will appeal maybe to the younger gamers, but maybe not to the slightly older ones. These noises happen every time you turn the speakers on and off. And as far as I can see, there is absolutely no way of disabling these sounds. So pressing the same button without holding will change the input mode. The speaker tells you in a robotic female voice, USB input, which is a red LED, AUX input, which is a green LED, and finally Bluetooth input, which is a flashing blue LED. Connection is really easy. Just open up your phone's Bluetooth and connect to Edifier G2000. Once connected, you will hear a sound to confirm and the blue LED remains static instead of blinking. To disconnect Bluetooth, just press the power button twice. Before we move on, here's a sound test of the speakers turning on and off and the profile switching announcements. And you can tell me in the comments whether you like them or not. Bluetooth input, USB input, aux input, music mode, game mode, movie mode. I'm really glad these aren't just USB and AUX speakers. The addition of Bluetooth is actually excellent. And also the fact that these speakers are really quite small makes them ideal for being portable, even if that's not their intended usage. I bought myself a Samsung S5e tablet purely for watching movies and YouTube on the go, as it has a 1440p resolution super AMOLED display and it has dual stereo speakers, but the speakers are the biggest letdown of the tablet. Having this these speakers though, the G2000s connected via Bluetooth to the tablet absolutely changes the entertainment possibilities of the tablet and this really helps with immersion, especially when watching movies. The speakers will automatically reconnect to your device too when you've turned it off and on so there's no need to pair multiple times. Finally, 
The final button on the G2000 isn't actually a button, instead it's a chunky volume rocker, and I'm a huge fan. There's plenty of room to get your thumb onto it to rock it up and down, and it works quickly too. Whilst connected to Bluetooth, it will actually change your device's volume, which I really liked. No need to mess about getting your device's volume you know, set to a certain percentage and then set the speakers to a different one, it just pairs up nicely. Changing the volume via USB or AUX mode connection though is not the same. The volume rocker doesn't change your PC's volume. Instead, you have to change the volume via your PC or adjust the volume via the speakers and it doesn't sync up at all. One thing that was frustrating was the length of the USB cable in use. The master speaker is the right hand speaker, which is great because you can use the controls with your right hand easily, but the cable is only around 100 centimeters long and I kept finding myself wishing it was more at least least two meters long. Luckily, it's detachable, so you can use your own if you want to. Specs-wise, the G2000s pack a punch despite their size, featuring a 2.75 inch full range base unit with 16 watt RMS power output. Both speakers have a power output of 8 watts and a maximum power of 16 watts, and they have a frequency response of 98 hertz to 20 kilohertz. I wish you could hear these speakers in person because I'm genuinely surprised at just how excellent these speakers are for such small ones. I can't record the audio for you because it will never represent the speakers on YouTube because YouTube compresses audio and also you'll all be using different speakers to listen to this video on so it's not really a fair thing to show it to you. Regardless, I'm going to tell you my opinion on the G2000s. As mentioned earlier, the lowest button pressed will change between movie, music, and game EQ modes, which the speaker tells you when you press the button. You only have these presets and there's no way of adjusting the EQ unless you plug them into your own sound card and then you could adjust the EQ via the sound card, which would change the sound of these speakers. Honestly though, for the majority of users that these are aimed at at least, the three presets will be absolutely fine. Now, as a musician, I had to test out music mode first. I tested all of these connection types, so auxiliary, USB, and Bluetooth. And as far as I could tell, there was no noticeable loss in quality between any of them. Setting the EQ to music mode, I listened to all sorts, and quite a lot of it as well. Metal, rock, jazz, 70s jazz rock, instrumental guitar, EDM, so many more genres as well. These are by no means bass pushers. Listening to dubstep, for example, there is a noticeable lack of bass, but I wasn't expecting the bass to be excellent as these speakers are small. If you're wanting heavy bass, then luckily they have that 3.5 millimeter bass out for a sub on the back. That's not to say that these have no bass at all though. It's actually quite the opposite. For speakers this small, the bass is pretty impressive. Where these speakers shine is the equal lows, mids, and highs. They're not tinny at all with too much high frequency response, which is honestly what I expected to find when I first looked at them. Instead, they're equally mixed and extremely clear. You get a great representation of the music you choose to listen to, especially instrumental music. One of my favorite guitar players tracks an insane number of guitars for a Phil Spector's wall of sound vibe, and it's often hard to differentiate each tracked acoustic and electric guitar in the backing. With the speakers loud at about 65 I could clearly hear the tonal differences between each instrument playing, even when they're playing in unison. That is quite a feat and I am definitely impressed. Before I move on, I just want to say that these speakers get insanely loud as well on 100% volume. I can't believe how loud they get. 65% is actually comfortable at the top end for me, 75% is absolutely maximum and it fills the entire room, but I can't really put it above 75%, it's just too much. On the other hand, they also get very quiet too, which is really nice. There's a broad range of volume, instead of 10% to 100%, really feeling like a 20% increase, you kind of get that full increase incremental increase, which is nice. Moving over to watching Netflix on my PC via USB mode with the movie EQ preset active was also quite impressive. Movies often have a louder music score over dialogue with sound effects like explosions going on at the same time. With lesser quality speakers, movie audio can become muddy
already, and that's not the case here. The music in the movies is clear and audible. Dialogue has clear separation, and you can definitely feel the impact of sound effects too. Remember what I was saying about pairing these with a tablet earlier? Well, like I said, these are excellent for that. So music is brilliant, movies is great, but what about gaming? So luckily we aren't let down here either. And everything I said about movie mode applies to the gaming EQ preset and gaming in general. I tried various games like Elder Scrolls Online, Rust, Tomb Raider, and of course Call of Duty. As I've said, the equal level of bass, mids, and treble paired with the gaming EQ really helps in games like Call of Duty where you need to be able to hear footsteps and distant explosions. You don't have to strain to hear the sounds you want to hear because they cut through the mix perfectly. I did pit these against my own studio monitors, which is totally unfair by the way, because they are much larger and more expensive speakers, but this is the only time that you can hear that you're listening to small desktop speakers. My studio monitors wipe the floor with the G2000s, but I do not call that a negative because for the size and the price of Edifier's G2000s, I'm seriously blown away. I've always dismissed smaller speakers like this because I've only ever had bad experiences with them until now. So despite my gripes about the USB cable being too short, the RGB LEDs not being overly noticeable, and the non-detachable cable between both speakers, as well as that cheesy noise on the start up and turn off, I really enjoyed testing these. If you're a laptop gamer, desktop gamer, tablet gamer, or even just looking for a pair of smaller speakers to link to your tablet for watching movies in bed or something like that, then I definitely recommend Edifier's G2000s. So what do you guys think of these speakers? Will you be getting some yourselves let us know down below make sure to hit the like subscribe check out our merch down below check out our website daily for tech news i'm andy this is kit guru i'll see you in the next one